Good day, folks. It's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. A little bit of application baselining and familiarization with how things work. We're going to look at a good old Nmap. And this just started the other day because I was using it to do a subnet scan. So I went over to nmap.org and I got the latest Zenmap utility, which is kind of cool. It's got a nice little front end. Obviously, you can do all this from the command prompt, but I thought, you know what? Let's use the GUI. Now, for the people that don't know this, when you use nmap, you've actually got three different commands you can use to do a subnet scan. So you can do the subnet slash 24, or whatever the mask is. You can do the subnet with a wildcard, the asterisk, or you can actually do a range. In this case, I chose 1 through 254. When you do the range, please make sure you understand your subnet mask and your range, because you don't want to send out a broadcast packet right because that's gonna muck things up so on to the results you can see it's populated the screen with everything that it found and that's kinda nice it's a, the layout is very I'm gonna say intuitive you can look at all the ports that it found when you click on a different device it's got a topology map which I did not find very helpful at all it was just squashed in probably just because of this network and what it found but what was interesting was the way it worked so if I go over to my trace file because obviously I ran Wireshark and at the very beginning, you can see how it does its network discovery. It sends out an ARP. It sends out an ARP for every single IP address on the network. That's kind of smart, because even if you have a firewall, you'll respond to an ARP. Uh, firewalls will block ICMP or ping packets, but it usually doesn't do much with ARP. So this is a pretty good way to find out what IPs you have on your network. So after the ARP, let me just scroll down a little bit here you'll notice the next thing it does oh, let me just find the next spot here it starts a DNS lookup for every single IP to populate the host name table now this is where things get a little bit funky because you can see the DNS requests go out and it's going to 888-8844 now when I do an IP config all for my trace I can clearly see that my adapter, my DynaDoc, my docking station is 888-8844. So that's good. What's odd is here, all of a sudden it does a DNS lookup for 216.104.96.22 and 98.222. Now what's odd about that is if you look at my IP config slash all, there is no DNS servers with those IP addresses. Now the big tip off for me is the fact that I have a built-in Ethernet adapter and I labeled it killer and I don't know what it had because if you didn't know this your DHCP uh, settings that you get are stored in your registry. So when I took a look here, this is a pretty good exercise to go through, I went to killer and it says it's disconnected therefore it doesn't show me anything that it had which is just a Microsoft thing. But I have a neat little utility that I use, and I've promoted it before, called Simple IP Config that I use to configure my interface. And when I select Killer, you can actually see 216 and the 96.222 and the 98.222. See that? So if you want to actually see where that is, the other way to do this without the utility is to go into your registry editor. And from your registry editor, just go to Edit Find, and you can type in whatever IP address you're looking for. And sure enough, there it is in the registry. If you want to make sure you have the correct one, it says DHCP IP address 39108. And when you go back to the trace, I mean, sorry, when you go back to the utility, you'll see that it was 39108. Because you might have multiple DHCP uh, entries for different interfaces. So you want to make sure you get the right one. So for some reason, Nmap is going through the registry and using settings that I have for other interfaces and it's doing that for the DNS lookup. I wanted to confirm that, so what I did was I started another Wireshark trace and I just went looking for random DNS names knowing that it would try the different DNS servers that I have. And you can see it clearly tried 888-8844 but none of that 206 IP address that we saw on the previous trace, this 216-216-104-96 and 98-222. So this is uh, clearly an nmap thing. It's not the end of the world, but it probably sends out a lot of extra stuff it doesn't need to, and it may slow it down a bit, I'm assuming, since it has to go through these various DNS servers. 
And then the last thing it starts to do is obviously it does that port scan. What's interesting with the port scan is not only is it going through the ports, obviously, that it's going to check for, but it uses the same Ether, uh, TCP port number. Pardon me. And you can actually see it. So you can see 443, 445, and it's all 42,007 in this case. I'm sure, I haven't verified this, if I run the test again, it'll have a different number. But this is kind of neat because now I know if I want all of the results from my Nmap scan, all I have to do is go to my, let me go up here, statistics, endpoints, pull this back into range, TCP, if I scan, sort by ports, you'll see, there it is, 42,007. Right click, apply as filter, selected. And now I've got all the stuff that Nmap was doing on my network. Kind of neat. So as I've said to you many times before, when you get a utility, sit down with it for a few seconds. Try to figure out how it behaves. Try to figure out what it's doing. Uh, more importantly, just try to understand if it's not doing things right, how to investigate that. Have a good day. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.